Et je suis avec euh, le lieutenant colonel. Lieutenant Colonel Shahar Spada, who just recently left the Gaza Strip. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. First of all, how are you feeling? De la bande de Gaza. D'abord, dans quel état êtes-vous? I feel great. Thank you for the opportunity. I feel great because I know that this is a war. I feel great because I know this war is a battle for the existence of the Jewish people. It's a war of justice, and we are on the right side. When this war ends, with our victory, the entire world will be thanking us. We spoke in the past, including shortly before October 7th. You usually speak of courage and strength, but I can tell that you're hurting. October 7 was a turning point in the history of the Jewish people. That's how I see it. I was at home. No one drafted me. I drafted myself because I heard what was happening. People ask me why did I gear up when no one forced me to. And my answer to them is that they're slightly confused. In my world, when a person is in need of help, I gear up and try to help out as fast as I can. That's the way I was brought up. You were in synagogue, and so you grab your weapon and drive to the scene. Well, not my rifle, because I didn't have it with me yet, but my handgun, yes. I got into my car, not knowing where I was going. I got into my car and drove south, with no clue of what was expecting me. For me, the war began when I identified the body of my dear uncle, who was killed in the city of Ofakim. You see the situation. You see the situation, you realize that you have no choice and you have to carry on. Please accept our deepest condolences for your loss. So you say that you had to carry on. It's been more than two months since that moment and you're still going. Yes, two long months, but we are ready to keep going for as long as it's needed. Be it six months, a year, Whatever it takes, we are ready to stop our lives completely for this cause. I have five daughters, a business, and it's uncomfortable for me. I didn't want this, but I feel that this is the entire Jewish people's fight, and they're standing behind us. We are their shield and protectors, ready to give up our lives to protect them because we have no place else to go. You have just returned from fighting in Gaza. Please try to explain the complexity of fighting in area like Gaza. You have to realize one thing. Hamas uses the local population, but our strength is in our humanity. We can be lethal, we can be sharp and decisive, but we will not kill innocent people. Hamas is using innocent people to shield themselves. That's why it's difficult for us to fight there. But you can be safe assured that we are able to handle this difficulty, maybe a bit slower, but with great success. They hide behind civilians. We will achieve victory without harming innocent people. Give us an example of that cynical use of civilians as human shields. I really hope that people around the world watch this and see how Hamas raised roadblocks trying to prevent people from leaving the war zone in those humanitarian corridors we created to evacuate civilians, families. They wanted them to stay. Hamas uses them for protection. And once they started moving, they shot at them. It's really difficult for me to see as a fighter a fighter in the army. We kill combatants. We make a clear distinction. Hamas does not. They use schools, hospitals, places we would normally see as untouchable. But they build their entire infrastructure at these locations. And is it true that they have placed speakers in toys and played sounds of crying children to lure soldiers into certain places? Hamas is definitely trying by different means. Some you have mentioned and some we won't mention here. They're trying to lure our soldiers into spaces where they can harm them. Our soldiers, in my eyes, are good-hearted people. So when they hear a cry for help, they run to assist. Hamas knows that too. They're trying to trick us in every possible way, with zero morality, because they know that innocent people will be hurt in the process, but they don't care. You were wounded several times in the past. In one case, you were in a coma. Tell our viewers about the atmosphere in Gaza, the moral of the men, most of whom, most of whom are the age of your children. That's 
I was wounded several times in my military service, three times to be exact. But I never claimed any disability rights from the state, not because I'm a rich man or something like that, but because I believe God has given me a chance, a life, and now it's my time to give back. What I saw among our ranks is courage and heroism of young people who are saying, we are here for anything. We are the state of Israel. People who are wounded and refuse to be evacuated to hospitals. People who lost their best friends and didn't attend the funerals because the fighting was still ongoing. This is our true strength. Those young people who answer the call. It's amazing to me, and it's our superpower. I may be older, but I see the spirit, and it fills my heart with pride. We hear of fallen soldiers on a daily basis. IDF announcements are delivered to dozens of families. How is it perceived inside the strip whilst the fighting is happening? It's hard either way. I won't lie to you and say it's not scarring our hearts. We'll do our crying after the war ends. Right now, what I see in front of me is our children, your children, my children, filled with pride. And we will mourn after the war ends, but right now, we simply don't have the time for it. Now it's our turn to serve our country. And it's a great privilege to me to say that I am here. Is it true that they forced you to leave Gaza to take over this company, Commander's Training Course, for future field commanders? It's true. But if you are the type of person to say, I am here, you understand that you have to do whatever is needed. And if I'm needed here, training our future commanding officers, then that's what I'll be doing. Obviously, I'd rather be inside fighting, but I see it as a calling to shape the next generation of commanders who will be taking this army forward, this country forward. Like the head of the Southern Command said recently, your generations believed in leading in front, and that's why so many officers were killed in Gaza so far, because they were up there in the front line. The motto of the IDF is follow me. It means you will always see commanders leading the force. We set an example to our soldiers and make them feel that they can trust their commanders. We bring experience and professionalism, all of the things we accumulated during our service. We don't hide in the tunnels, we run forward. And we will always do that. That is the motto of the army and of the people of Israel. What can I wish for you and the fighters in Gaza? I want you all to pay close attention to what I'm about to say. We will be victorious. Even if it takes a long time, we will win for the people of Israel. Yes, the price will be high. But our real mission is to figure out where to go after the victory. What kind of society we want to build here after this victory is achieved. This victory which will be served on a bloody platter. We will build our future with love, with care, with humanity, with Zionism and the love of the land. We are the eternal people and we will have the upper hand, I promise. Lieutenant Colonel Shachar Spada, thank you so much for this interview.